Welcome everyone to Percona Live 2022. It is truly an honor to have you and we welcome you wherever you are. I would love to say thanks to the organizers and thank you to all of you as well. As you guys know, my presentation will be based on data wrangling with MangoDB. After this presentation, I guarantee you guys, you will have the mindset of data wrangling, right? My presentation is 70% uh, demo and 30% talk. Before I dive into the main topic, why don't I introduce myself? Who am I guys? Um, my name is Jean Joseph. Okay, I am based out of New Jersey, originally from Haiti. I'm a big fan of going out to eat, fishing, listening to audio books, movies. As you can see, these are my four kids. I have three handsome sons and one stepdaughter. Um, I'm currently working as a data engineer. I'm a Microsoft MVP, data community builder. For those who don't know me, I'm the founder and the main organizers of a data driven community. On the data driven community, we have cloud data driven that is focused on AI, sorry, on data management and visualization and then we have uh, feature data driven that is focused on the growth of ai i've been in it for over 19 years i started my career as a network administrator while supporting database team i moved to database administration and development and after that i moved to data engineering Enough about me. If you guys want to follow me and my community, feel free to scan. So let's go to our main topic now. What I'm going to cover with you today is, guys, I will go over the goal of data wrangling, how to think about data wrangling, and then the technical tips for data wrangling in MangoDB. And there will be a walkthrough examples. After this presentation, I'm going to change your mindset regarding data wrangling. So what is data wrangling, guys? Data wrangling is the process of cleaning and unifying messy and complex data set for easy access and analysis, correct? What that means is that when you take your raw data or your own organized data, you turn that data set into something useful where business can go and use that information to make to take to make decisions out of it. Right. So what are the use cases for data wrangling? If we're looking at here, if you're doing marketing, you will need that. Machine learning application need that. Healthcare system, financial services, and banking. Travel and hospitality, voter and elections, statistics need a clean data, right? So that's where you're going to think of data wrangling. So how important is data wrangling? It is very crucial, guys, to understand that if the requirement or if the required data is incomplete or incorrect, trust me, you cannot make a good decision out of that data. It is simply means that all the insight might be wrong because your data is not 
you know, well clean, uh, which can sometimes uh, a little bit time consuming and then it requires a little bit of money as well because you will need people that have knowledge in this field uh, to clean your data the way you want it. What I like about data wrangling, it's help you reduce uh, uh, the research by ensuring the information you are about to store for business to use is reliable. Put that in your mind. So if you done it properly, so that's mean you are the winner. Otherwise, it could be time consuming and business won't be able to meet the expectations, correct? But doing the data wrongling, there are some steps you need to follow. Those steps are the one most likely data analysis or data scientists get lost. And this is what I'm about to cover with you. Okay, guys. If we're looking at here, doing your data wrangling process in practice, what to expect, guys? First, you have to think of data discovery and profiling. Very important, guys. So what I mean by data discovery and profiling. So that's where you have to explore your data for you to better understand what it, con what it contains and what needs to be done to prepare it for the intended use, right? That help, um, uh, so once this is done, you have to, uh, there's going to be data profiling that will help you identify patterns, relationship, and other attributes in the data set, as well as an inconsistencies, guys, correct? Anomalies, missing value, and other issues that can be addressed, right? So what I mean by, so you have to be able to identify the necessary steps to familiarize, centralize, and connect all your data. Once this is done, you have to outline the key technical requirement for the data processing pattern, because most likely when people think of data wrangling, they only think of the cleaning part and transforming. Before you, will, before you will get access to clean that data, you have to think of ingesting that data and you have to process it sometimes. And once this is done, you have to store that data. That's when you will need to think of the right data platform approach for your project. In our case, we're gonna use MangoDB as the storage and we will use Python to process, clean, and transform and um, save that data, correct? So once uh, the discovery and profiling is completed, that's when you're gonna think of extracting that data. I know this is not uh, uh, something related to data engineering, but what I normally um, make data analysis or scientists think, you need to understand the data processing architecture pattern. Sometimes if you, working for small business, you will be able to do everything. You need to understand when you have to go with Kappa versus Lambda or Lambda versus Kappa. If you're dealing with batch processing, you're dealing with live streaming, you have to think of Lambda. If you're not dealing with batch processing, it would be best to go with Kappa. And then you need to know there will be a trade-off between ETL and ELT. Once you're designing your, your data processing pattern, you have to think to optimize it for compute and storage. Okay, once this is done, guys, that's when you're gonna think of cleaning the data. When you're cleaning the data, you have to think of assumptions. What I mean by you have to test assumptions about values, okay? About, for example, data type. 
ships. Sometimes we may, there are some uh, requests before we are able to um, um, give people uh, business what they expect from us. We may need to retransform that data, uh, reshape that data. And then once we reshape it, that's when we will be able to, uh, you know, uh please business request okay and then sometimes you are uh, you have to think of identifying either or outliers you understand missing data value there's a tons of things you have to think of but unfortunately most data analysis or data science focus on the cleaning part they ignore everything else so during the cleaning sometimes they re after they've done everything and when business complaining that's when they realize uh, whatever they done didn't meet business expectation. Why? Because they only focus uh, on the cleaning part. And sometimes there's data silo as well, but because they didn't do a nice job doing the discovery and profiling part, then they were not able to discover that. So follow this process will make you save a tons of time just for your information. So when we're looking at all of this, you can see these are the data. That's the new currency. So doing the discovery, extracting, cleaning, you think of data, which is the new currency. However, after this is done, that's when you have to think of storing the data. Once you store that data, so that data convert into information. But do it, once you store it, you need to think of a tons of things. That's why you need to have a minimum understanding of uh, data engineering and then for you to work with that team to ask them a tons of questions so you may need to even ask a business and you need to understand your environment because the data once you store it so you have to think of consistency matter because you will be dealing with distributed system you have to be able to understand how important is so data con uh, if uh, how important is it if consistency matter you have to be able to advise business performance may impact a bit because once that data committed it has to be available across all replica before you will be able to see that data that may impact performance a bit that's going uh, you have to think of for protecting your data as well because once you save your data some data have to be reside to at its location so it cannot leave for example if you are in europe some data cannot leave you up because of how sensitive is that data and you have to think of data governance as well who's going to access that data not only that you need to think of performance and scalability because once business need that information they will work with you right um, uh, if performance matter, they will tell you they're not able to get that data. It takes forever. They will not know it's a matter of resources. They may think it's a matter of your process. So understanding, you know, um, how business will request will access that data will have you work better with other team, and you have to take off reliability as well. Once this is done, that's when you will think of what we call analysis where business will go and make decisions you understand use the tools uh, like power bi machine learning microsoft excel tableau python r mango db aggregate framework you understand so in reality this is what you need to expect i'm not asking you to master this but i'm asking you to understand the process and have a good understanding right for you to better assist business. So um, uh, in a nutshell, this is going to be the workflow. So this is the wrangling. These are the activities that's going to be happen within your process, correct? If you're looking at here, there will be a source. The source can be anything. It can be sensor. You can see because there is, um, there is, uh, there is a um, IoT device here, I can clearly see there is live and there is uh, batch processing involved. You understand, I can define this as a uh, Lambda architecture to process that data. I know this is not related to data engineering, but however, doing data wrongly, you have to think of extracting, 
processing as well. We cannot think, uh, we cannot think or even talk about uh, the dialogue link without introducing the five characteristics of uh, quality data. The first one is validity, which tells you the degree to which your data come from to define business rules or constraints I like that. The second one is accuracy. That uh, so that's when you have to ensure your data is close to the true value. The third one is completeness which tell you the degree to which all required data is known. The fourth one is consistency, that allow you to ensure uh, your data is consistent within the same data set and equals multiple data set. And then the, the last one is uniformity, which tell you the degree to which the data is specified using the same unit of measure great guys so that's when we are close to demo guys okay so now before we go to the demo as we're gonna use mango tv to as our data storage why don't we introduce mango tv guys what is mango tv mango tv is a document oriented no sql database Used for high volume data storage, I like that. It's designed for big data. So if you do not have a big data, do not think of it. What I like about MangoDB, it provides you flexible schema. So that's when you don't need to worry about uh, if uh, you, you have a document that have 10 fields and the next documents have 50 fields. You don't need to worry about that. As long as the syntax is valid, and your data is parsed, so that means the data will be committed. And it gives you flexible deployment as well. What I like about MangoDB, it is rich with aggregate framework. When it comes to data wrangling and analysis, I would highly suggest you to think of MangoDB aggregate framework because it is rich. It is oriented toward programmer. Like, it doesn't matter about your background. If you come from Java, .NET, PHP, Scalar, Node.js, C, or C++, even Python or Erlang, you will be able to work with it. So let's go to some demo, guys. Before I go to the demo, let me show you something. If you're looking at here, this is the file we're going to clean. I'm going to keep it simple very simple because uh, the mindset is what I, is my goal is to give you the mindset if you're looking at we don't have tylo here we don't have tylo here if you're looking at here we have comma we have dashes we have we don't have uh, any pbi certification riaa certification so now consider for example um this is a business request okay our goal is to remove all records where the title is empty. Okay. Replace dashes with zero for UK and US chart positions. Okay. And they want you to replace empty string with the unknown for PBI and RIAA certification fields. And they want you to change the release date to a different format. And then they want you to insert that into battles. So for example, this graphic collection, okay, under Pekuna Live DB database, right? So now after that, they want you to calculate how many platinum, gold, silver for PBI certification. So now let's explore the data, correct? So this is the data, let's explore it. So when we select that data, you can clearly see we have Tylo release. That's the exact uh, same fields you're able to see here. As you can see, this is the field, okay? So now if you come, you can clearly see that's what you get here. However, if you're looking at here, we don't have Tylo. We can clearly see that. So now we need a way to 
for example, exclude those empty record. So what I'm doing here is that is uh, splitting the light, uh, right? So, and I need uh, index zero. Index zero will tell, tell, give me the first field. And the first field is, is happen to be dialog. So if I execute this, so you can clearly see, I can see that I have empty field here, right? So um, for your information, I'm using plain Python to do the demo just to give you the mindset because I know what I have been through uh, whenever a data analysis or sometimes I switch out to data engineering team for support. Do you understand? Most likely they believe in a tons of module that's already done all the work, but the mindset they don't have it. And some requirement, if the feature does not exist, they have to go out. And people who don't know Python, they have to Google it and, you know, see what can they do, you know, to get uh, the task done. So I'm going to keep it very simple and give you the mindset. So now, if you're looking at here, for me to exclude, for example, the empty uh, records where Tylo happened to be zero, so I'm, what I'm doing here, I'm reading the file, okay, line by line, and then I'm using split to do the same thing, and I have a condition. If the length is different to zero, I want you to point that. Guess what happened? We were able to point it very nice and neat. So far, so good, okay? So now, the second uh, thing was to for example, replace dashes with zero for UK and US chart position fields, correct? So now if we execute this guy, so the job couldn't be done. If you're looking at here, this is the two fields. True enough, this is work, but wherever there is comma, it does not work. If you're looking at and then if we go to our files, you will see we have comma here. So instead, instead of using OS to import the data, I would highly suggest you to import or to use CSV module. Module, okay? So this is the CSV module. So what I'm doing is to import it, okay? And I am doing the same thing to see if that will work. As you can, you can see, for example, I was able to do that just by importing that CSV model. Perfect. So when you're cleaning your data, you should not clean your data in one big giant um, script. You have to analyze it step by step. If there is bug, you will be able to cache that, put that in your mind. Okay, so let's do the next one. If you're looking at, we have uh, to clean, uh, for example, replace dashes with zero for UK, okay, positions. And then we have uh, two for UK and US positions. So if you're looking at here, the code is just pointed out, but we didn't overwrite the value. For us to overwrite the value, as you can see, this is the same thing. I'm reading the file, okay? This is the header, because I wanna remove that header as well and a loop to the records. And then I need to apply my uh, transformation against all record where Tylo is not null, correct? That's what I'm doing here. And then what I'm doing here, I wanna, for example, replace this and append this. So when I do this, you will clearly see, for example, I was able to do the work. Perfect, so now I override it, you can clearly see that. Great. So now the next requirement is, replace the empty string, okay, 
with unknown, guess what will happen? So let me point this just to visualize the data. You can see we have empty fields, okay? So those empty fields have to be unknown. If I go, okay, just bear with me. If I go and execute this, if you're looking at here, even though I cannot say replace here, it will not work. And if you Google it, you will see a tons of uh, recommendations, but it will definitively not work. I know you're probably thinking, if I close this, this is what one guy told me, why don't you close this? When you close it, it changed the underlying data because you're dealing with on empty string, okay? So I know like uh, what he told me after that, use single quotation, single quotation and double quotation in Python are still the same. Okay, he said, put this space. Let me put that space again. It's still the same. So let's bring it. Oh, perfect. So the best way to do this, guys, just for your information, is this is what I'm doing. Okay. So I am following the same principles. These are the same scripts we just use. The difference is that I'm using an if conditions and I'm stripping it. So that's when I'm revo removing all the empty space. If the length happened to be zero, I want it to be unknown. And I'm doing the same thing for the other fields. When I execute this, you can clearly see I was able to get the job done. Great, so now, so far, so good. Let's carry on. So now, remember, we have to change the release date to a different format, correct? For you to do that, you have to import the util parser to change it. But before we done the transformation, let me import this and then read that data for us to be on the same page. When I read that data, you can see this is the format. So they, they want it to be here month and day instead of month day. So now let's go and change this. So what I'm doing here, we import this already, but we will need this um, module to do that, okay? So this is the same script for me to read the data, remove uh, the header, okay? And then loop through the records and then uh, only uh, do the transformation against uh, records that have uh, title, okay? And I need, uh, so what I'm doing here, I'm using this one, as you can see, this this one, right? To, if you, to for example, if you're looking at here, that's the conversion, okay? So now I'm using this one to bring the format. So when I execute this, you can clearly see I was able to do, to do this, right? So now, guess what happened? We will need to revisit the title because when we remove the uh, empty records, we use OS, not uh, CSV module. So let's uh, carry on with this. Let's execute this. So we're still in good shape, great. So now let's bring the final script. So once you're done with everything else, so that's when you're gonna add up all the little transformation you have done, okay? You can clearly see we were able to clean that data. Great, so now everybody is happy, okay? So now once this is done, you need to convert this record into JSON format because MangoDB only accept uh, uh, BSEN data. And if you're looking at it, it is the same kind of format with uh, JSON. So now for you to do that, what I'm doing, it is the same script above. If you analyze this, it's still the same script, but I'm adding one more and I am defining a new document for each record. If I execute this, you will see, for example, I got it. How great is this? 
So now those records, so now I got everything that I need. I will need to turn this script into a function to make this script runnable. So what I'm doing here, I'm defining in a function to insert every new document. I need to know the server name, DB name, the collection name, and I need that the document to insert. I'm importing by MangoDB from MangoDB client, and I'm defining the server name, DB name, the collection name, and I'm inserting it. But for me to insert this, that did I have to be parsed? Okay, so this is the same functions that I have that give me this output. That's the same script. I just wipe it into a functions. So at the end, instead of point, I call these functions to insert the data. So let's execute this to create that function. So now, guess what happened? I have to define my variable value. This is the variable value. This is the data file. Server name. This is the DB name, and then this is the collection name, guys, okay? So, and then this is the functions, and remember the function we call the insert functions. If I execute this, you will, so that's when the data is inserted. All my record has been inserted. So let's read uh, one document from that, okay? So if we're looking at here, I was able to read one document. That's amazing, guys, correct? How great, nice demo. So if you're looking at the first record is please, please me, and then the date is 1963, and then the label is uh, par le fond UK, and the positions is one, and then uh, the US uh, chart position is zero, for PBI certification it is gold, and then for IAA certification is platinum. If we go to our Excel, you will see it is the, the same file from the CSV, as you can see. 63, 1963, that's the label. This is the position. If the dashes have to be zero, we've done that. We have called platinum gray. So now, guys, what else we have to do? So let's go and, you know, do kind of a select all from that table. Let's select all of them. And then I'm using, if you're looking at here, I'm trying to point this guy, okay? So if you're looking at here and you guys know documents, you can clearly see this is the object ID, right? We didn't define it by default. Uh, that's how it's gonna create. So now let's go and follow business requirements. So the goal to find all records where label happen to be Alpha Lofon US uh, UK, okay? So what I'm doing here, this is the label, this is the client, and then this is the DB name. And then what I'm doing here, this is the criteria. You guys know MangoDB, okay? That's the criteria. And I need uh, uh, that label to be equal to this guy, as you can see. And then this is my projection, okay? So if I select this one, you will clearly see I have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I go here in my one, uh, uh, CSV file and I select and I click on filter, and I label, uh, filter on label where it is equal to follow phone UK. You will see that I have seven records, but there is one record happened to, didn't have any title, or we remove this. And then if you take a look, you will see this two, you know, seven records. And if you remove this, it will be six. And then this is exactly the data that you have in here, correct? So now let's do, for example, let's uh, calculate how many platinum, gold, silver we have. This is a bit, uh, you know, intermediate, but I just want to uh, do it because uh, most likely the transforming 
and the cleaning, the processing is where you're going to spend most of your time, but I still want to make it a little bit fancy. If I execute this, you will clearly see, for example, that I know how many uh, unknown records that I have, how many platinum that I have, gold that I have, silver that I have, 2x and 3x platinum that I have. You can clearly see it. And if business wanted to be into a chart, we can do that. So what I'm, uh, so we will need to import matplot uh, library, okay, and numpy. As you can see, this is the same thing. This is the same query. The difference is that I have to define the x and y values, okay, to get that value. When I execute this, you will clearly see that this is what I have, and I was able to, you know get the job done so if we're looking at here you can see how ugly is the was the data and how clean we were able to work with that data to give it a better shape for business huh? to go and for example make decisions out uh, of that data so now things you need to know uh, this is based on my experience where I have seen people get confused when it comes to data wrangling, cleaning, and mining. Okay, guys. Wrangling is something data analysis or scientists uh, will spend, spend a lot of time because you have to convert that data into an intelligible format. Cleaning is like fine and correct in accurate data in a large data set, right? Mining is that when you sort data to find hiding pattern in large data set. So just for information, I want you to, you know, understand each one what exactly they do. Because wrangling, you will definitely need a pipeline to do the job. But cleaning could, could be part of wrangling, just for my information. Yeah, so Things that you need to know, you know, as a best practice, you need to be able to interpret your data. You have to be able to interpret your data. So you need, you know, you have to understand each organization can be dealing with the same set of data, but use it in a different way. If you bring over your experience from your old organization, I would highly suggest you to understand business logic and requirement before you go and apply any past experience otherwise you may end up to get the job done but it's not complete it's not exactly what uh, uh, it business expected and then you have to use appropriate data set guys so that's mean it's not about having a lot of data it's about having the right data set, guys. OK, so make sure you are giving business exactly what they want. Nothing less, nothing more but what they want. And then you need to be able to reassess huh, your wrangling data. So what I mean by once you implement that process, do not rely on it. You need to look for inefficiency. You need to look for error. You need to look for inconsistencies. You have to understand if business requirement change, you have to be able to change that process. And then uh, you need to be able to transform your data for better analysis, because here's the thing. If you clean your data the way it's supposed to be, client will be happy, and then there will be less frustration from your end. Right. So that said, I would love to say thank you. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. If I'm not able to answer it, I'll be happy to blog about it. OK. And then enjoy the rest of the event. Feel free to connect with me. One more time. Thank you and have a good one. Bye bye.